Okay, one last thing from that model is the cerebellum. So you can see the cerebellum here. You've got two hemispheres to that. These two little tiny lobes are called your floccular nodular lobes. The ridges on the cerebellum are called folia. This little guy right in the middle, kind of like the body of the butterfly, is the vermis. Vermis means worm, so it's that little worm-like structure there. This is anterior lobe, posterior lobe. And that's pretty much all there is to see on here. Here's your um, peduncle, cerebellar peduncles. Alrighty, a couple more brains here and then we'll do meninges. Corpus callosum, lateral ventricle. This vessel looking stuff inside that lateral ventricle is called choroid plexus. It makes cerebrospinal fluid. So it's just vascular. Here's your fornix. Thalamus. More uh, choroid plexus here. This is your pituitary gland, and you can see the infundibulum, that little silver piece of metal. Hooking it on there would be the, like the infundibulum. Here's your hypothalamus, posterior and anterior commissure. That's probably it for this one. I mean, you have the lobes, obviously, temporal, frontal. You can see the cranial nerves. Olfactory, one. Here's optic, two. Here's oculomotor, three. Trochlear coming from behind, four. Here's trigeminal, five, six, seven, and eight. Abducens, facial, vestibular cochlear. Uh, nine, 10, and 11 are hard to distinguish here. And then here's 12 because it's near the olive in green. And this would be your medullary pyramid and your pons. Okay, I wanted to go over this model. He's got um, dura and some of the dural septa that you have to know. Dural septa are just folds of dura mater that fold in on themselves and go down some of the deeper fissures and sulces in the brain. And when they fold, they create openings, which are called sinuses. And these sinuses are not like bony sinuses. They are sinuses for venous drainage of the brain. So here's our skull. You can actually see some bony structures on here. Here's your coronal suture, sagittal suture. Just be aware of those types of things. And the outermost layer of dura covering the brain is going to be, I mean, the outermost layer of meninges is going to be dura mater. And that's what you can see here. Now this dura mater has folded in on itself and created a septa. And this one is called the fox cerebri because it divides the two cerebral hemispheres. Fox cerebri. Attaches to the crystagalli in the front, goes all the way down to the cerebellum in the back. And you can see kind of in shadow this blue structure here, and that's one of those dural sinuses, and this one's called the sagittal sinus because it follows that sagittal suture. You have another septa between the two parts of the cerebellum. So our cerebellum would sit here, and there's a little bit of a septum here. This is called your Fox cerebelli, between the two hemispheres of the cerebellum. And then between the cerebrum and the cerebellum, you have a septa, and that one's right here. Okay, and it's called the tentorium cerebelli, because it's like a tent over the cerebellum. So the cerebellum would sit right here. So this is tentorium cerebelli, Fox cerebri, Falk cerebelli, and this is your sagittal sinus. You also have lots of other sinuses in here. You can see them. All of this white here is dura mater. Now on this guy, we can also see some cranial nerves. Cranial nerve one, olfactory. Cranial nerve two, optic, going through the optic canal. Here's your lesser wing of your sphenoid. Right here behind the optic nerve, they would cross right here, right on top of the pituitary, which you can see in pink. Okay, so this is the pituitary gland in that hypophyseal fossa of the sphenoid bone. And you can see a little stalk coming off of that pituitary gland, and that's the infundibulum. Now you have uh, cranial nerves three and four, right here, three and four. 
five trigeminal, so three is oculomotor, four is trochlear, going to the eyeball muscles. Here's trigeminal five, and you can see it's splitting to go through the different holes of the brain. One, two, three, so that's V1, V2, V3. This is six, coming up again, abducens, going to the eyeball with uh, cranial nerves three and four. This right here is cranial nerve seven and eight, going into that uh, internal acoustic meatus. So facial and vestibular cochlear. And down here you have cranial nerves 9, 10, and 11. So glossopharyngeal, vagus, and accessory. Okay, and there you can see that jugular foramen there. And then here is your hypoglossal nerve, cranial nerve 12, in the hypoglossal canal. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Here's another nice model that's showing you the coverings of the brain, the meninges, and some of the septa. So again, you can see the same thing here. We have our falx cerebri with our sagittal sinus. So this is all dura. We look at this from the top, you can see the dura here and here. And they've cut into it so you can actually see the blood in the sinus. Now underneath the dura mater, you're going to have another layer called the arachnoid mater. That arachnoid mater is going to be responsible for re allowing reabsorption of CSF into these sinuses. So all those little white pock marks on here are the arachnoid villi where the CSF is being uh, taken into the venous system so that it can become part of the blood again and your brain can make new CSF with the choroid plexus. So this is dura mater with a sagittal sinus, arachnoid mater on top of the sulcian gyri, and then you have arachnoid villi. Now the pia mater itself is going to be basically the outer layer of the so it's going to be adhered very tightly to these sulcian gyri. It'll go inside with all of these little dips and everything. So this outer shiny layer of the brain is the pia mater. And then right below that, you'd have your cerebral cortex. Since we have this one out, we'll look at some other structures. Here's your cingulate gyrus, corpus callosum, fornix, septum pellucidum, choroid plexus, epithalamus, pineal gland, thalamus with the interthalamic adhesion, hypothalamus, optic chiasm with optic nerve, mammillary body, anterior commissure, posterior commissure, cerebellar, or cerebral peduncle, I don't know why I keep saying that, cerebral peduncle, third ventricle, cerebral aqueduct, fourth ventricle, Corpora quadrigemina, superior colliculus, inferior colliculus, arbor vitae of the cerebellum, pons, medulla, central canal, cranial nerve one, two, three. Sorry, that's mammillary body. Here's three, cranial nerve three. This one's not showing four. Here's five, six right in the front of the pons, seven and eight. 9, 10, and 11, I don't see. Here's 12, and there's the olive of the medulla. Okay, here's that ventricle model I was talking about. So all this gray is actually space within the brain. So although it's a structure on this model, it's actually showing you a space. Here's your two lateral ventricles. So this is one and two lateral ventricles. Here's your third ventricle here. That hole is to allow for the intermediate mass between the two thalami to connect. This is the cerebral aqueduct, and this is the fourth ventricle. The pink stuff on this model is showing you choroid plexus, which is where the CSF is produced inside the brain. Now, don't forget when you're doing brain to also look at your sheet brain at some point before now, between now and the practical. There are Lots of presentations out there on sheet brains already for you. 
so you should have no problem finding those and also make sure you know what holes all of those nerves are running through because remember you got to combine that with your skull information because you'll see that all together on the practical.